So I have been seeing miniature art shows popping up all over Facebook and on the internet lately. Started with this one created for a gerbil. Then I found this one for some guinea pigs. So after some research, I discovered Tiny Art Show. This was created by McKay Lenker Bear, an art teacher in Utah. This is a community art project that brings miniature artwork to unique spaces. They have created artwork all over in places you would never expect. They also invite other artists to install their artwork. Recently, they did a quarantini art show contest. And they invited people all over the world to create their own miniature art galleries. So I decided that I would create one for my cats, Finn and Remy. We're very bored and I think they could use some time in an art gallery. So before I got started, there was a couple things to consider. I had to play curator on the artworks I was going to create. A curator is a person who cares for, collects, and arranges the artwork in a gallery. So I figured since this was going to be for my cats, I decided to make famous artwork replaced with something about cats. Once I was done creating, I had to install the artwork. And this is the job of an art handler. They take very careful procedures to install a new artwork. That way they don't damage some of these priceless artworks in an art gallery. So I put on my white gloves and installed a new exhibit in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. My challenge to you boys and girls is to create a miniature artwork. It doesn't have to be a recreation of a famous one. It could be an original by you. Although the pieces you create will be different, they need to look like they belong together. You can create unity or unidad through your use of art elements, materials, and technique. Another way artists can create unity within a collection of work is through a common idea, subject, or theme. These small sunset paintings by Dina Brodsky demonstrate unity in their subject matter and circle-shaped canvases. Remember, paintings don't always have to be rectangles. Shay Aaron sculpts miniature food items. Notice how detailed each piece is. There's even pepper on the mashed potatoes. What teeny tiny details will you include in your work? Carol Adone paints enchanting miniature worlds inside tiny lockets. This series is inspired by the solar system. She calls her lockets tiny escape portals. Where could your imagination take you? Rosa de Jong's tiny worlds offer an interesting perspective on our natural and built environments. Take a look at her charming series of architectural miniatures. Although each one is different, they still look like they belong together. How has she shown unity in her work? Hassan Kale has been creating art on small, everyday objects for over two decades. Any tiny item could be the canvas for his next mini masterpiece, from these butterflies to almonds, bottle caps, and leaves. His work is a reminder that we don't need conventional materials to make art. John Almeida is a self-taught ceramic artist who soon discovered that working small was much harder than he imagined. John finds inspiration from the world around him. What will inspire your work? These coins by Andre Levy are from a collection of more than 200 pop character portraits on coins. The series is called Tales You Lose. 
What clever title will you come up with for your miniature collection? Willard Wiggins is the creator of the world's smallest handmade works of art. His delicate sculptures require a microscope in order to create and see, but can take months to complete. Here is a series of trees depicting the four seasons. He created them inside the tiny hole of a sewing needle. Luckily, the work in your collection should be small, but it doesn't need to be this small. In 2013, Lorraine Lutz began a project called 365 Paintings for Ants. She completed one small painting every day for a whole year. You only need three works of art for your collection, but you can choose to make more if you'd like. Now it's your turn to create a tiny art collection. To start, choose an idea, subject, or theme that is meaningful to you. Think about what interests you, what fascinates you, what are you passionate about. Focus on one thing to create unity in your work. How you make your work is up to you as well. Today we're going to be working on making our frames for our tiny art show art. You will need a piece of paper, some glue and scissors, pencil, sharpie, and your art for the tiny art show. So we're going to begin by just putting your piece of art over the frame. And right now the frame is perfectly square, doesn't really have a lot going on, it's not very interesting. So we're trying to make our frames look very uh, ornate and very decorative. And so we're going to do a folding and cutting technique to do that. So please fold your paper in half once and then in half the other way. And now, this is very important. We have to figure out what side is what, okay? One of these sides has a fold, no open sides. So that is not the side we want to draw on, so I'm gonna put a little X there. One of the sides has two folded edges, but no open sides. I'm gonna put a little X there. I don't want that side either. If you look at these ones, see how this corner has all four pointy corners and both sides are open? These are the sides we want to draw on. So what you're gonna do is kind of staying close to there, you can draw from here to here to here any type of line. So it could be a curvy line, could be a wig, wiggly line, but remember you have to cut it. So if it's a super small zigzag, that's going to be very difficult to cut. So I'm just going to do kind of a wavy line and maybe I'll bump out at the corner and do another wavy line. Okay. And before I cut it, I want to double check that I've drawn on the open edges. So this side is open, this side is open. These sides are folded. I'm not cutting on those sides. If you cut on a folded side, your frame will fall apart. So I'm going to carefully cut, trying to stay in the line best as I can, around the corner. Zoop. And then you're going to open it up and see what you got. Okay, so here's my frame. This side will be the back where I have all my pencil marks. This side will be the front. And you can see I have enough of a frame still left that you can see something on all four sides. If you accidentally cut off too much, then you can make a new frame. That's why we want to work carefully and not cut off too much. So first things first, you have to write your name on the back of the frame. You also should put your class code, so write that down. Then I'm going to put glue lightly. I don't want a lot of glue. Definitely don't want it to ooze out on our frame. So glue lightly around the edges. I'm gonna turn it and press and hold. You could count to 10, you could count to 20. And you want it to make it nice and glued. Cause remember, this is for our tiny art show. If you have a little glue that comes out, like mine's got a little bit, just try to wipe it off. All right, now, the last part is the Sharpie. 
The Sharpie is just, you can add a few details to make it look like it's decorative. So maybe I'm gonna add some scrolls to my frame. Maybe I'm gonna trace a little bit of that line. And then I might put just a few more details on. Okay, so that way it's your special frame and it will be ready for the tiny art show. Here you will take on the role of a curator or curador. You will learn how to select, organize, and present your collection. Step one is to select or seleccionar. You need to choose a space to display your collection. You can find a space in your home, such as on a shelf or in the corner of a room. You can also create a space by making a miniature room with a cardboard box. Or you can repurpose a space. This little free library has been transformed into a mini outdoor gallery. You can even reimagine a space anywhere else around your house. The next step is organize or organizar. Here you will arrange and display your collection. You can hang or tape your 2D artwork to a wall, even add some toys or figures as your visitors. Or you can build your own tiny furniture and place any 3D work on small pedestals or tables. You can even arrange your gallery for small pets to visit. Don't forget to add final details. Choose a title or even write an artist statement. You can create a miniature sign, poster, or book to display. Finally, it's time to present or presentar. Here you will share your miniature collection. When you photograph your work, make sure that you're standing close. You don't want to be too far away. We want to be able to see your tiny masterpieces. When taking a picture, it's a good idea to hold your camera at eye level with your artwork. You might need to bend down to take a photo. Also, make sure you have bright lighting so that everyone can see your work clearly. You can move things around and take multiple photographs as well. Here's my favorite picture of my miniature collection. Now it's your turn to curate. Start off by selecting a space for your work. Next, organize your art and add final details. Then, present and photograph your work. And finally, share it with your classmates. 